come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the movie review and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. Our quest to take over the world, to body snatch the world, to Ooh. right invade, yeah, take over the world, the really world, is. one person at a time. One the themes one tonight. Wow, time. one po- wow, wow. <laughs> it all fits. It does too well. <laughs> Well, you can help us out with that by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button. These are the internet radio superstars. Holly. Are you? Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sean. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by you. you. That's right. As a reminder, in case this is your first episode at the end of every year, we do a, a listener request uh, month. This is the uh, fourth and final, the most voted for movie by you this yeah, month. Yeah. Actually, it's the, the, it's the first. first. It's the, the first. The, yeah, one. the, the year, fourth one yeah. we're doing. The number one pick yeah. of yeah. you, the people. Should we do that yeah. backwards next year? Start it with the first we one. We won't remember. We'll down? do the same thing next year. And Yeah. <laughs> so what was the movie that we watched tonight that you chose for us to watch? Invasion, Invasion of, of the Body, Body Snatchers. Snatchers. 1978. There, that's a good decision. Yeah, yeah, we have to uh, distinct so there's what, like what version. Six of these movies? There is Invasion know. of the Body Snatchers. 1950. 1950. Yeah. Six, four. It's up. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, 56. Mm-hmm. 56. Mm-hmm. And then there's Invasion of the Body Snatchers, 1978. Mm-hmm. Then there's Body Snatchers yep. mm-hmm. from 1993. Yep. And The Invasion from 2007. Mm-hmm. And of course, there's always subsequent uh, TV series and offshoots, t- yeah, yeah. yeah. But so, but those are the, like the four main movies. I have an invasion on my list to bring here. Yes, I was gonna say if I was gonna pick one of these movies to bring to the freak show, this was not the one I would pick. Because that was a weird one. Yeah, I would have. That's why I would have brought it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Daniel brought Craig and uh, yeah. Nicole Kidman. Because I don't think yeah. there were pods in that one. I don't think so. No. I think they like. I don't can't remember. Wasn't that more germ. Yeah, it was like mm-hmm. a germ. They got into you, and then all of a sudden you were somebody else. Yeah, which isn't as fun. You want a pod. Yeah, you gotta have if, a you're pod, gonna, if you're gonna do it, pod people. Mm-hmm. I remember. I think the first one of these I saw was Body Snatchers, the 1993 one, because that one always I remember freaking out. I remember disintegrating bodies and shit. Yeah, in that mm-hmm. one. That so, was the one on the military base. Yeah, and yeah, that one freaked Gabrielle me. Gabrielle Anwar, am I right? Was in that, and Billy Worth from the Lost Boys. Ah. and I think he had moved to a military installation. Forrest Whitaker's in it too. Right. Right. Yeah. But it's like, it's just kind of, I don't know if they were making it, you know, it takes place on a military base where everybody's supposed to act the same. Right. So, so hard yeah. to tell. Yeah. That's cool. Hard to tell. That's a, that's right. a nice you, detail. It is. When you get yeah. in those situations where it makes it, the distinction is not so clear. Yeah. 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 Like a church. Yeah. <laughs> right. Those are all pop people. Mm-hmm. Definitely. <laughs> So it's based on a book by Jack Finney that came out in the, I want to say, was that a 50s, uh, or like early 50s? It was adapted in a the movie. The Body like, Snatchers, 1954 stories in Colliers. So like two years later, yeah. right, they made a movie out of it. Mm-hmm. It was uh, Don Siegel, who's worked with um, Clint Eastwood a lot of times. Don Siegel has an appearance in this he movie does. as a cab driver. Starring Kevin McCarthy. Who is also in, in this, this movie. Basically continuing his role. <laughs> He's been rallying against the pod people for years. And in this one, they finally got him. That one has a, like, you remember that one? The, mm-hmm. the original 50s. It has this really, like, downbeat, apocalyptic ending. Yeah. And then it's rescued by this scene in a police station that I think the studio said you have to do. Where it's like right. the cops in, like, the, the next county over or whatever actually do believe him as he relates this story. Mm-hmm. I think the whole story has been told to the cops in a police station, right? Yeah. And that one, because it ends with, like, they're coming! They're coming! Yep. <laughs> you know? Yep. Uh, or they're already here or whatever. And, uh, but in the police station, it's like people believe him and there's the idea that the, uh, you know, the, the, mm-hmm. the government is going to take care of the problem. Ha 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 But this ha. is 1978. <laughs> and things when, are very different. Right. A lot of political thrillers around this time. We're very counterculture, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Director. Oh, uh, uh, Philip Kaufman. Who we would know from? Uh, This dude wrote a shit ton of movies. Uh, The Right Stuff, Raiders of the Lost Ark, The Wanderers. Like, this guy, the outlaw Josie Wales, this guy's a prolific Hollywood writer. He's also, yeah, and a director. He directed The Right Stuff, which Mm -hmm. I think was up for a bunch of Oscars. I think he directed, if my memory serves, the very first NC-17 rated movie. 
Henry and Henry June. He did, yeah. yes. He, did. he also directed Quills. Anybody remember that movie? I remember yeah. that movie, yeah. 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 Jeffrey Rush. Yep. Jeffrey and, Rush and uh, Kate Winslet. Yeah, and and yeah. That played on HBO so much yes, that I was just like, I was, was so was young, I was like, ugh, HBO. I don't want to yeah. watch this shit. Yep. <laughs> and the Wesley Snipes movie, Rising Sun. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Was that yeah. Like? yeah. And a uh, movie I really liked, the TV movie Hemingway and Gellhorn. I oh, really liked that. I liked that movie too, yeah. Yeah, so he's like, I mean, he's a good director, a good writer. He, and he said it, but like he co created Indiana, Indiana Jones. Jones. Yeah, right? like that's... he did the story for yeah. <laughs> Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, nice. no bigs. Yeah. Um, and the writer, I'm going to give a shout out only because this is his third appearance on the show. It's W.D. Richter, who also wrote the 1979 Dracula and the unforgettable The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai. Oh, across no. The, don't bring up that movie. Uh, fuck that <laughs> that movie. was that was a very dark listener request month when we had to watch Buckaroo. I mean, that was one of those. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah. Was. one of us did that to ourselves. <laughs> you guys yeah. are weird. Yeah. Um, Philip Kaufman also directed Twisted. You remember this? The the Ashley Judd. Uh, oh. oh, the one with the trailer. Yeah. It's going down, but it's going down twisted. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. It yeah. sounds so prime for this one. show. Oh, my God. Yeah, remember <laughs> Ashley Judd was in thrillers for like three yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. Non-stop. Yeah. Double yeah. Jeopardy. And then you never saw her again. She and Along Came a Spider. Along Came a Spider, yeah. right? Kiss, yeah. kiss the Girls. Yeah, Kiss the Girls. Yeah. 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 Kiss the Girls, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe oh, we should way. do Ashley, Summer of Judd. Along Came a Spider was Monica Potter, I believe. Yeah, she was in... Kiss the Girls, which okay. is a good movie. Yeah, yeah. okay. Watch Sounds movie. like a theme month. <laughs> if I, I mean, yeah, it really was. Well, Summer yeah. of Judd. Yeah. <laughs> well, I haven't read the original, the novella or whatever the serialized. No, you've version been reading is. the photo novels. Yeah, what you've been <laughs> doing. <laughs> 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 which I mean, I didn't even know. I mean, it makes sense. Just novels. With it's like a comic it. book, but it's made up of pictures from the movie. Uh, this is before home video. So in 1978, so they just take so, so you can get a full page look at right up Donald Sutherland's nose mm-hmm. yeah. before we zoom into Sean's his mouth. leafing yeah. through it right now. Yes, in very good condition. Photo Hold on to that. So nobody spills. I know, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's like not even creased. Colin. No, right. Yeah. Colin yeah. bought it and didn't read it. I got that condition. probably in the early 80s and yeah. have held on to it. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah take that off the table. Yeah, we should probably take that off the table. <laughs> um, so Invasion of the Body Snatchers, I guess, is like a, um, it's a story. I mean, it's a paranoia thriller. Mm-hmm. And everybody's familiar with this, right? I mean, the idea, or is this kind of, has it been so long since there's been one of these? I mean, the listeners suggested it because it's a classic. It is a classic. I mean, the title tells you everything you need to know, yeah. you know, but it's very literal. But yeah, this, this same story gets told over and over again, I feel yes. like, though. So. But yeah. I think we're overdue, like... I hate to say it, but like when COVID really seeps into movies narratively, we'll see movies like this again. Like, I feel like we've seen this recently. What did we, what did we just watch that was very similar? I feel like we just watched something that was along. Think about it because I feel like we did too. Yeah. So Something I'll leaf there. through our Fucking previous yeah. episodes. Inspired, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, there's a lot of inspired, inspired by movies. Yeah. Out I just there. had a winter viewing of the thing, and I thought about that often during mm-hmm. this movie. Sure, the idea yeah. that you know people have been replaced by a copy, mm-hmm. uh, but it's that paranoid. Uh, yeah, it's a paranoid movie. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, there's there was paranoid political movies that were coming out at this time like marathon man mm-hmm. or um seven days of the concord mm-hmm. or uh or condor yeah stuff yeah. like that but this is like the social paranoia movie yeah yes. yeah i i feel like the <laughs> i feel like socially the problem with a movie like this now is that we're all just so fucking exhausted that we're like fine like just invade yeah there's yeah. a lot more acceptance of being mm-hmm. taken over at this I'm point like, yeah. I- because like no, because we've been taken yeah. with without our consent or anything, we've been taken over a lot by many things yeah. outside of our control lately. It feels like yeah, mm-hmm. and like this whole movie, they're running for their lives, and I'm like, I'd be like, just you know, give it, give it a shot. Right. Right. Okay. Like, do I get to sleep? I'm not doing a good job. I'm very so, tired, especially like, when they talk about what the body snatch is. It's, yeah, it's, they're, they're selling me on it. Doesn't sound right? bad. They there's say there's no fear, there's no anxiety, there's no and like you're every, old. everything's yeah. copied over. You're the same yes. person. Like, oh, okay, you're the same yes. person, but like yes. reborn into a better life. Yeah, this we have no great. need for love and hate. Don't oh, yeah. sign yeah. me up. 
I'm in. Yeah. I'm yeah. exhausted. This is horrifying to the audience of 1978. <laughs> I'm horrifying. Horrifying. <laughs> well, okay. So what? Why is it a horror movie? What? What is the? If it is such a, you know, if it's pitched that because Molly, well, you, know, you got to mm-hmm. look at who's telling you this also. Yeah. But yeah. okay, let's say it's but a I mean, utopia. Yeah. Once you're in the, once you're you've been body because snatched. this is also a time of like this is you know Cold War Russia. This is when the possibility of of being taken over by communism is actual threat. Yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. that's the fear. Yeah. That yeah, you're going to like become this like zombie. You're going to mm-hmm. live in this country that's completely taken over by the government. Right. So this is a real fear yeah. in, the, in the late '70s. And yeah. there's also well, the other '50s things. one for the sure. 50s for sure. Was, yeah. That was it. Was the Red Menace? I yeah. think was the the '70s. I don't know if it's the same, but maybe I guess conformity. Yeah. I suppose is like uh, it's the idea that it seems like like okay. So what makes a human a human? Right. It's the little things you would lose. Like these the things don't love. Or anything, or have uh, uh, emotions, or, or uh, anything outside of a very robotic relationship with each other. It feels like you know, just the little yeah. human things that and, you would yeah. lose. And in, in the seventies, after you've had like the sexual revolution, you know, mm-hmm. you've you've had this awakening that everyone. You imagine like, the boring ass sex yeah. those fucking robot yeah. pod people Do they have? have sex. I would imagine so. Well, this was a thing that I was kind I don't of curious think they need about. It. Like, they they bloom into pods. They yeah, don't need to have sex. What is the? Um, but you can kill them. So it seems like they only live a certain amount of time. They copy every, your entire mind basically as it is at the moment that they they get you right. right. So you are still a, at least a copy of you, but they still are aware of each other and yes. they're aware of their their greater mission. But I, I do wonder if they do get killed, can you grow another one, or is that it? Like Jeff no, Goldblum they, no, dies, because, is like he done? Like but, they can't grow another one of him, right? I feel like they. I don't know. I feel like they can though. Is it just like plants? You take a clipping and, and put it in some yeah, water like for a little bit to the roots, yeah, right? Till and just grow a version of that. I wonder. Grow another one. Well, and that's a good question because I wonder, like, okay, so how does it work? Is it like because mm-hmm. I guess we're we're given the idea that basically they become kind of a collective mind hive mind right this is also mm-hmm. the thing that we all fear is becoming part of the collective you know at all yes. the group think or whatever um Even so we do it a lot anyway but if yeah. if that's true cuz we see like individual pods like replicating people but yes. once they're grown they seem to have some kind of like extrasensory awareness of mm-hmm. each other so then yeah when you're uh copied is your consciousness like uploaded to the right and does that matter well, then you can make an, another person. I guess sure. is this is all going back to the idea of like they're going to have boring sex. Are they going <laughs> to have sex once the once the the pods people take over all the humans? Right. I assume mm-hmm. they take over all life, mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. on Earth, and then Earth is just a hundred percent like the Borg, right? Mm-hmm. The, the pods. Yeah. Then, but if they live finite lifespans, um, then they all die. <laughs> you yeah. know, well, I, well, unless they reproduce. Yeah. I mean, Unless they I, do I, have cold robotic. I think that's sex. why. I think that's why they they say at one point in the movie that they do this. They go from civilization to civilization, taking over. I feel. I think that's why they do it, because they don't reproduce. They just take over bodies, and then when they start to run out, they move on. I mean, don't, and don't make any more. Hmm. And then they just like escape from there to the the next world. I mean, yeah. I guess the movie starts off and we see. Can you imagine them floating away as humans, the way the things floated away yeah. in the <laughs> beginning of the movie? They're just like, oh. yeah. How do they do that? Because if they're if they're a hive mind, even though they're still like an individual, like I don't think they're still an individual. I think it is just like the one consciousness, probably. So mm-hmm. and I, they I, they don't need multiple bodies. They just go to the next place and inhabit multiple bodies. Right, but it's I wonder, just the one being. I wonder in moving from what they were. What we see at the beginning of this movie, which is very um, protozoa, you ba- oh, I I, I, good, the best word I can come up with, <laughs> yeah. floating into space. If that, because they've come upon a new, a more advanced life form, humans, mm. what they can accomplish as us to move forward to a new colony. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I guess we see them loading seed pods, like hum- you know, the the all the clones are yeah. loading seed pods on trucks that take them across the world. So you would assume the next step is. We're going to load them on a rocket or something and use these guys already, you know, spacefaring technology to take these things into the solar system yeah, or something. Because I think we're told by one of the pod people that, you know, survival is basically the instinct that drives them. And that's why they've migrated across space. But they... 
did he say that we've done this other times before? Yeah. In which then, case, then yeah. we're like, so did the thing that we saw at the beginning, like that isn't even its real form, the seed pod thing or whatever, the little. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what I'm wondering. It's just because, the most recent one. Right. But if they, but the jump from that to humans, mm-hmm. I wonder if that stops their ability somewhat to invade other species you know what i mean um this is very self-centered human thinking that we are like what is beyond us that they could inhabit and take over you know what i mean well maybe that's the sequel is that they inhabit the earth not realizing that that's the last thing they can inhabit right but like what no, is what is beyond yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Human forever. Like, you should have kept Welcome going Welcome to our life yeah. 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 right but you this is the wrong uh, planet. according to all aliens don't stop here because yeah. this is probably it yeah. <laughs> like, don't them. stop with the humans cuz you know you're gonna fuck yourself Dude, leave us alone yeah. that's the movie it's like it's like a suspense movie where it's like the you got 24 hours to save our species but it's it's already like a taken over species. It's yes. like, oh, well, that's yeah. the movie. Yeah. <laughs> you guys see that mean It's like aliens probably lock their doors when they ride past Earth. Oh, yeah. yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. yeah like, they're like, oh, God, yeah. we're in the bad neighborhood. That's yeah. the message. Well, yeah, yeah, keep going. Yeah. Yeah. We're not going to help you. Here. <laughs> okay, now we I are want the, that. We, we are the dead yeah. end. That we are already taken over and <laughs> yeah. they have to figure out how to like reproduce and how that to move on. It feels like a Twilight Zone. Like, did Twilight Zone get to it? Like, it feels like know. they did that, or that's a perfect Twilight Copyright Zone it. episode. Copyright, Copyright 2024, <laughs> Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, just a lot of just uh, alien regret is just what they'll get after they get through here. Alien regret. Oh my God. Um,. Well, the uh, the original movie didn't go into the life cycle of the thing. I love this, the, yeah. the way that this one starts off. Oh, my God. Kinda. The tagline would be, our hubris is their undoing. <laughs> it, really, it really would. And then they would eventually. Oh. At least our hubris is good for something. And, what, and once they realize that, they would eventually start turning back into regular humans. Because yeah. like, you just want to fucking smoke weed because we're not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah. It's like we have nowhere to go from here. Like they would slowly turn back around and yeah. just be like. They uh, unstepford themselves. Yeah, right. Yeah. Just because they realize they have no place to go and they're just like oh this now we know why humanity is oh, humanity yeah, yeah, and exactly. so it just keeps happening over and over again this is a great movie oh my god you, guys. <laughs> you should write it there uh, might be uh yeah yeah money in them there we chance. have 50 <laughs> movies we have to write guys this is a based great on idea everything we've said on this podcast um what are we talking about yeah, uh, yeah we're, 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 <laughs> body body snatching so this one has like a different um kind of um well at least uh, cast of characters. I thought it was a good idea that the um, in this one they made like the lead characters part of the Department of Health. They're in yeah. San Francisco. That's where this takes place. Yep. We see it. I like that it. it's like these seed pods travel across space and then they come down in rain yeah. and and get on plants, and then they like grow, and we see this like really cool, uh, you know. Yeah, the opening sequence is really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Very much they, so. they grow like they grow like little flowers on yeah. other plants. And so little, it's like little tendrils yeah. that are that you see, are yeah, the little tendrils out come in, out. And it's, yeah, yeah. the practical effects on this are awesome. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. Pretty yes. cool. Like, how did they do it? Kind right. Of thing. It was just, um, yeah, I wanted what, fifty more. some years later. It still looks incredible. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, this, this might be a stupid question, but I wonder if any of these are like actual plants that they realize do these cool things and they just like set a camera on them. And like a high speed one, they just yeah. sped up the footage. Yeah. I don't think so. Cause no. that little. I can't imagine. Well, even in that, those tendrils like growing, I mean, that it, I don't know. I, Nothing. I mean, I'm because sure it's still raining, like that, but I know, can't imagine. That scene, it's I, like I real know. time. I gotta rain. imagine it would just be quicker. Just like we have, there's a plant in India that will do this, but let's yeah. just make them here in the lab. Because I mean, I've just I've seen so many nature videos, of right. like Mushrooms and different, right? Yeah, With, oh like yeah, the high there's cameras. something that yeah. does this. They yes. do these things, and it's just like incredible. So it's yeah. like I can see something actually doing. Do, this right. movie is kind of shot like a David Attenborough it like really documentary, is. and I dig it. Like it's a cozy. It has a weirdly cozy vibe. No, like ten minutes into this movie, I was like between like the shots of all the nature stuff and yeah. the apartment and the wardrobe I'm like I want to live in this movie yeah mm. same it's and awesome it but, is but, but it, it does also, a very good job of making you paranoid of like next time you walk past a plant yeah like, you got this suspenseful I'm camera work in this movie is really like it's very the 
very tense. The it way is very tense. Totally. If you totally. haven't seen the original, yeah. you should look at it and compare it to this one because yeah. they do a lot of sort of the slightly tilted shots gotcha. or, mm-hmm. the, and the lighting is similar too with mm-hmm. people running past yeah. the chase scenes, mm-hmm. uh, the, kind of mm-hmm. the first big one they have. Very reminiscent of the 1956 movie. Sean, one of my favorite moments when we were watching this was when you were like, why are there so many Dutch angles? Oh, it's just San Francisco. Just San Francisco. <laughs> just, just streets going down. down. I've, never, I've never seen a street go up and down I, before. I, I, but. Think, I don't think we are cut out for that, guys. I think we might die if we go there because we live in such a flat area that yeah. if we're like... Right. Have you ever you been in traffic? 45 and, degree right. angle? Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever been driving for an hour and just hit the brake and never hit the gas? That's yeah. San Francisco. Yeah. Well, they're like running down a like a walkway at some point and there's like street signs like as they're descending. Mm. Yeah. Like, this is 59th right. Street. That's you keep weird. on going. Right. It's there, they're 31st yeah. or yeah. whatever. Yeah. You're like, what? oh, not for me. Not, yeah. not for me. Uh, yeah, definitely. That was the Full House Street, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, that, that was, was, yeah, it looked, uh, yeah. I was like, that looks like the Full House yeah. opening. And the um, houses are big. I don't know if the setting like matters, you know, like they're like, let's set it in San Francisco. It I think it's interesting as far as landscape. Yeah, yeah. I think it's cool. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it needed to good. be a port city of some sort. So, um, Igor is just made of pots. Do you feel like you're covered in corn silk right now? Uh, right now, this yeah. is how they do it. So which uh, this because the first one I remember had in the like the because there's always the movies are always going to lead up to that big special effects sequence where someone is actually birthed out of a yes a pod mm-hmm. the first one it was like all bubbly and stuff but there were like bodies actually coming out of yes. them. these ones flower they, yeah I guess, and the first one they, they were a little more uh a little more foam mm. like uh, like mm-hmm. bodies made of foam and you kind of be like if you watch it now you're just like ah yes foam bodies <laughs> then they were also like soap dish bubbles yeah, that came yeah, out of the pods yeah. But I like the it's addition cute. of the like corn silk <laughs> kind so of thing. Like, yeah. it's, so it actually does physically have to touch you mm-hmm. in order to begin the mm-hmm. like replication yeah. process. Did you guys ever have to detassel corn as a kid? Yes. I hated that. I was like, don't <laughs> let me. That, it feels so gross. It feels gross. Hand. It's child labor. Yeah. <laughs> I did it when I was like <laughs> nine. Yeah, same. Yeah. And you everyone was like, it's fine. Yeah, my detassel. nephew's doing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. You never shuck your own corn? Yeah. <laughs> No, I do, but like, oh, yeah, detasseling is a different. St- that's is, yeah. it's a hundred degrees out, and you know, yeah, but you'll be fine. But it's 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 stringy and wet at the same time, and that's what I hate about touching corn tassels. Yeah, and this does have that kind of vibe yes, when you see it. it like, yeah, yeah. Uh, go pick a go 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 into a cornfield and just pick a thing out and touch that, yeah. that stringy hair. That's Please on stop it. making that motion with your hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a question for the people, Holly. The yeah, question was, I know, <laughs> of how the thing actually worked. Like uh, early on. They find uh, like one of their friends has been replicated. There's a body, but it hasn't been formed all the way. The fact that it's mostly there, right? Yeah. Um, but they leave it. They don't destroy it. And then they, we know that this thing, it, it gets you while you're sleeping, right? Yeah. You fall asleep I and mean, then we, that's when. We the- do need to talk about where they find the first body because it is in a mud bath. And oh, this place is disgusting. Why? Oh, oh yeah. Was this just, did the screenplay just think we've gone too long without a scary or gross moment, so let's do a gross spa scene? Yeah, this yeah. Was a, a gross spa? Is this, but this was a but is this like part of like setting it in San Francisco? Because a lot of things, eventually you're mm. going past the Maybe. like, the porno theater. The, the, yeah, the red light district. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. red light district and they've got. Live like, nude collegiate. This movie's yeah. PG. It's PG. I mean, that's 1978 wild. PG was a different era. Yeah, I know, but it's, yeah. just, it's still... There's nudity in movies. Yeah, weird. we didn't yeah. have PG-13 at this point, did we? Nope. No. 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 But I, that's what I was like, is the, the whatever, the, the friendly neighborhood... Bath house and yeah. spa, mud bath. It was just it was a like weird baths choice. next to antiques, yeah. <laughs> where everybody reads Proust. <laughs> yeah. yeah, compares notes they or really whatever do. that was. It was yeah. like why that bath. was a strange yeah, parties and everything. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, exchange between the owner so uh, of the mud bath and that that guy, the the client. They're talking about this book that you have to read. And like what? Um, <laughs> so they set. The main they make the main characters part of the the the, the Department of Public Health, right? Mm-hmm. Which this I thought good. was a good idea. In the first idea. one, I think he was the the general practitioner, town doctor. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. But this one, it's like, well, Department of Health. You're talking about something that's eventually going to become like a contagion, and right. so mm-hmm. he's going to be in a position to actually do something. Yeah, I dig about it. it. Yes, and know more about it, and you know uh, how it it would affect a wide mass of people, mm-hmm. and, you know, and mm-hmm. a lot of stuff. Because we're introduced to Donald Sutherland as he's. Uh, inspecting, uh, st- a inspecting a French restaurant, <laughs> and he's like, "It's a kepper, it's a rat turd." Yeah. <laughs> this like, is Ugh. okay. And this is a, 
issue I have with a lot of movies. Why are health inspectors villains? Dude, they're try- they they're are heroes. heroes. He's the hero. He's the they hero are, in the movie. I, yeah, but like, but to this restaurant, he's oh, a yeah. villain. Well, yeah, no, he's, shut they, he's not a villain. No, <laughs> but you should be shut down. That's your attitude. Well, like, the health inspector, like, this is a thing across movies. Health inspectors are always the bad guys. And I'm sorry, I don't want to eat at a restaurant that a health inspector has not been to. Like, the, yeah, they like are not going to. Like, like mm-hmm. why is wanting to your restaurant to run hygienically a bad thing? <laughs> right. Like, right. it's. Because if I you've got understand. rat turds, I think they actually catch the rat th- or yeah, something at do. some point. I, well, I'll say, I was wondering, like, do they catch the rat or did he go get a rat? And uh, the guy comes back, I caught the rat. And then they yeah, all go yeah. into the office mm-hmm. together or whatever. Oh, yeah, this is after the, the weirdo who's just staring through a glass door. It's yeah, like, that, uh, uh, some... that extra wanted to be in that shot. No, that no, was, no, 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 that was that was one of the pod people. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah. The, like because it's, they, yeah, you can see like slowly throughout the movie. There's they're more frequent. Yes, gotcha. which okay. I, which yeah. I like that, and they do. They're just I like background, like background, yeah. background, yeah. background. It is set up very well, especially because this movie is on. At least for that like first half hour, it's really trucking. Like the mm-hmm. speed at which we get into the situation yeah, where these right people in. are paranoid and weird about like people are changing and something's different mm-hmm. it is really quick. Well, like which Michaela changes said, it's the, even the way that they shoot it, it's, it's there's a lot of stuff happening. In the backgrounds of scenes, like the mm-hmm. the guy, you know, you saw like, foot, yeah. Well, because there's like there's a story about like mysterious webs all over the city yeah. that he's clipping out. Webs and then descend from the sky. We see these things that appear to be like every garbage truck has like a bunch of like uh, ash and webs in it. And you're yeah. like, yeah. what in the fuck? And then yeah, I saw a foot, but and there's all these people like either behave, you know, uh, a character will leave a scene and the character, the people who are still there will suddenly walk together and just kind of stare at me mm-hmm. like, oh, yep. oh, because we don't know. Are mm-hmm. they pod people or are they just bored? Uh, it's, it's the yeah. it follows the qu- thing. Ask that question a lot. It's just like follow it follows. Are they bored. following me or are they just walking near me, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So oh. you never know who's who. Mm-hmm. I couldn't really tell who was who because I thought like the whole um, thing about pod people was they lose their, um, you know, you lose your emotion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so then they wouldn't be prone to outbursts, anger, you know, any kind of sympathy right. or love or anything like that. Right. But one of the main characters who apparently has been a pod person for a while, uh, seems empathetic and, uh, is able to talk to them. You know, it, it just didn't seem Truly. like who's in was, this movie. We should say who is in this movie. Well, Don, Donald Sutherland, yes. like you said, mm-hmm. star Sutherland. of Clute and, uh, MASH. Mm-hmm. Yeah. MASH. Yep. Right. Yep. We've got, um, Kelly Le- Heroes. Leonard, Nim- Leonard Nimoy. Yeah, Leonard Nimoy, yep. <laughs> Leonard Nimoy, I am not Spock, and then later, I am Spock. I am Spock, yep. yes, for his biographies. So this uh, is like, I'm like, have I seen Leonard Nimoy in a movie outside of Star Trek? I was Trek? thinking that too. I was like, I don't I think don't I have. Think. <sighs> not a lot, yeah. personally. Because he gets uh, to have outbursts in yeah. this movie, which is he never got to do with Spock. He gets mm-hmm. to smile in this movie, which he never got to do with which Spock. Which is right. unnerving. He gets yeah. to- <laughs> <laughs> He's right. like, I've never seen this before. Like, he, he, gets to, he gets to gaslight people, <laughs> which I think he did as Spock. Uh, yeah, Spock's yeah. prime directive was gaslighting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we've also got Veronica Cartwright in this movie. Jeff Goldblum, we're missing. Jeff Goldblum yeah, yeah. in this movie. I, I mentioned Ver- Veronica Jeff Cartwright Goldblum. because, I mean, from Alien. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who, I mean, on, in another Alien movie. Did we establish, like, I think, on an earlier episode, wasn't she like a child in The Birds? She was one of the students oh, I don't or remember. something in The... I think she was in The Birds. Did we watch The Birds? Yeah. Did we talk about The Birds? No. I don't think we. T- I don't yes, think we no. watched the birds Very on this show, but we were talking. I think we about- talked about it. We've well, we yeah. talked about. It. We have not watched a birds movie. We should watch a. We birds movie. A, did we watch a Veronica Cartwright movie? Did we? Was she oh, in? No. We didn't sure. watch she, Repo she, Man. She, no. I think she showed up in something. Okay. Before. Well, anyway, uh, sorry. Sidebar. Continue. And then we got Jeff Goldblum, of course, being mm-hmm. Jeff Goldblum in this the movie. Jeff Goldblum a year before. Correct me if I'm wrong. The Sentinel, where he had like <laughs> a walk on, but he yeah. has like a lead kind of role. Black and white cake. Black and white cake. Yeah. Yeah. I Robert Duvall's in this Robert movie. Robert Duvall's too, in the movie for like a, a no, moment. Like a split second. second. What was that all about? Was he just <sighs> shooting a movie next door or something and just was like, I'll be in this scene? Yeah. yeah. Was he, he wasn't in a, word, a different right? movie <laughs> in the same year? Yeah. Yeah. Because he wasn't an unknown. I mean, he, he was didn't in say a word, The Godfather though. movie. No, he's just in that one yeah. scene. We, as need a, a we need a creepy priest on a swing who's staring at children playing with plants. Yeah. That screams Robert Duvall. Does anyone have Robert Duvall's number? Right. Is Robert Duvall available? Oh, yeah. That scene, right? Like, so in hindsight, we're like, that teacher was taking those kids like come and yep. get the plants children yeah, take yeah. them home because you don't know when because yes. we're introduced to characters and we see their perspective of, of when it started for them but we don't know when this well started i guess grabbing right. people the impression that i had when you first watch it is that like 
the rains fall, the, the flowers start growing, and here's that morning. But I think when we actually join the movie, we're, we're already it. several days yeah. Or, yeah. you know, into this process. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and so Veronica Cartwright, Jeff Goldblum. Um, Brooke. That? Oh, Brooke, Brooke Adams. Adams. Brooke Adams. Brooke yeah, Adams. yeah. Mm-hmm. Who is in... Um, I've seen her before. Not today. Starman. What was it? She was... Oh, God. Hold on. I'll, I'll find her. I know she's like... I know her as Christy's mom from the, the Babysitter's zone. Club. <laughs> oh, okay. Yep. yep. So. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the she was dead in the zone. Dead Zone, Days of Heaven. The uh, Dead Zone. That's been on my freak show list for yeah, a while. I yeah, haven't seen, I haven't seen the Dead Zone. I've seen clips of the really? Dead Zone. Really? Like, oh, ice. Yeah. Yep. It's gonna wreck. <laughs> I, think, I think the dead zone might be more relevant now than it was when it came out. Probably. <laughs> Great Gatsby, 1974, Lords of Flatbush, Car Wash, Shockwaves, Days of Heaven, uh, the first Days Great Train Wow, a man, a, a, woman a, ba- a woman, and a bank. A man, a woman, and a bank. I've seen that. One. Isn't that with also Donald Sutherland? A man, a woman, and a bank. I think that's with Donald Sutherland. Yep, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else knows that movie. No, I'm sorry. No, I've just no. I've just seen the movie. <laughs> nothing, nothing. I've watched. It's a bank robbery movie. And like I, a me TV situation. But where did she yeah. go? Is it, I don't remember like no. old Brooke Adams. You know, in she movies. was in the stuff as a special guest star on a commercial. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Unborn, Gas Food Lodging, Babysitters Club. There you go. Yeah, totally. That wasn't yeah. the Unborn with Gary Oldman. Yeah. That was like Are you an older one. A question? No, I know it was okay. a, an older one, but yeah, I don't know whatever happened to her because she's like. Good. She's really good. She's she can good, do that yeah. thing with she her eyes. She's married to Tony Haloub. Is she? Yep. Uh, Tony Haloub? Yep. Really? Uh, oh, yeah. And they have two kids. Well, I'll be damned. Yep. Uh, so did she retire from acting? Was she on Monk? I don't know. Huh? I never watched Monk. So. I, mean, yeah. she, I, well, I never <laughs> saw her on Monk. I've seen a lot of Monk. I don't think she was on Monk. <laughs> Were you she a Monk head? St- I, for work. Oh, okay, for a long okay. time. It was on one of our networks. So I've seen a lot of Monk. <laughs> <laughs> hey, beep. some people really love that. Some people love some Monk. People he, love he, he, this year, he, he had a movie. Yeah. yeah. What, Monk's last case came Wait. out this year or last yeah. year. I'm sorry. Oh, not this year. I'm sorry. We in are, 2023. Yeah. 2023. Monk's Mr. last Mr. case. Monk's last on yeah. Peacock. Check it out now. Yeah. <laughs> they brought him back. Why are you promoting Peacock? <laughs> yeah. You don't work for I like NBC, TV. right? Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe I'll work for him one day. I don't know. Well, these I haven't are the, been yet, uh, Holly. I'm, uh, <laughs> those right. folks that uh, Sean just mentioned are the people who are going to slowly get the idea that, yes, there is an alien invasion taking place. How do they, uh, what are the, the warning signs? The warning signs. Uh, uh, Brooke Adams notices that her boyfriend, uh, is it Jeff? Mm-hmm. Jeffrey. Jeff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's Art Hindle from, Art uh, Hindle, yeah, yeah. from yeah. Black Christmas. And Porky's and, yep. and yeah, uh, any yep. Bob Clark movie. Um, notices that he is different he's been mm-hmm. acting strange he's not he's less he's not showing emotion mm-hmm. he's very robotic he's not the same person i like donald southern's response he's like well all dentists are weird <laughs> yeah right yeah, yeah, which, well that's very true yeah we have to figure this out wrong. do her does does donald sutherland and brooke adams do they have a very familiar relationship oh there's the that there's she's... sexual tension there mm-hmm. yeah oh yes yeah, very much sure. well there's later i think because demoy is a, a famous apparently uh psychiatrist yes. mm-hmm. and has written a book and he kind of uh like lays it out at some point it's like well do you think that you know your boyfriend is uh, another person, or are you just looking for a I way hate, to get I out hate, of the relationship? I and hate she looks Leonard at Nimoy in this movie. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I hate him so hate very him much. much. Now, was this I, like a new thing in the seventies? Like the idea of like you know therapy, going to see? Yes. Oh well, yeah. Well, it be, wasn't new, but it, it was hitting a resurgence. It was, yeah, yeah, it wasn't new, but it was becoming yeah. like a thing. Because in like the 30s, people thought going to therapy was also awesome, and it had a big. Oh yeah, thing like, then, right. And, yeah. But there was also like send like, the wife to therapy. She's having yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. she's having issues. Mm-hmm. That that was all the rage starting with you know. Freud. This is yeah, this was, is where the bitch slap glove came from yeah, back what, in yeah. the day. Hey, is we, gotta talk about, <laughs> we gotta talk about that glove. All okay. right, Leonard Nimoy wears a. Altered like Archer's glove yes. on his hand, but it only cover it covers a couple fingers, but only covers the back of his hand. Yeah, yeah. And it it's doesn't leather. cover his fingers. It loops around. It, it his loops around, around his fingers, his fingers and it's like a leather, yeah. like two inch wide strap down the back. Just of his on the hand. back of it his just hand, covers the back. And he of his wears hand. it through this whole goddamn movie. Yeah, and it's got to be for slapping. 
Re- it is absolutely just, for backhands. Yeah, absolutely backhands. for slapping backhands. It's, 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 it's not a driving glove. It's not an archery no. glove. It's not a golfing. It glove. is a it's bitch like, slapping what? glove. Yeah. I got a. I, I would. <laughs> it's not a band aid. No, I would imagine. I, I can only imagine because I've seen different things for people who have uh, ligament issues or arthritis and something in yeah, their hand where yeah. he can't. Maybe he can't. Because he wears it, he can't stretch his fingers the entire way, and he's not supposed to. I have no idea. Then you're like, I'm not a medical doctor of this day or any day. Did well, it happen to Leonard Nimoy? And he just brought it on. In my movie? experience, is a bitch slapping. Yeah, it's <laughs> a bitch slapping. <laughs> There's been a lot. He has the energy of like. A, uh, an MLM leader that would say he could like hypnotize you and solve all your problems. Oh, he's a cult like, that's what it feels like oh, he's yeah. doing yeah. it to me, right? He's like, Sean, were you saying, were you the one telling me that you couldn't be hypnotized on stage? Yeah, yeah I okay. went, did, <laughs> went, went through a thing where I you know, did, went up on stage to do one of those mass hypnotizing things and they couldn't do it. <laughs> and they sent <laughs> me, I, I ruined it for him and they sent me back down because yeah. I was just, a very just like, similar thing happened to me in church. Yeah, they tried to, <laughs> was it just church? They tried to slay me in the spirit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, and, and you will and speak they, in tongues now. You're like, no. kept pushing my head and I was like, you gotta stop. Yeah. I'm not doing it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, gotta, it's like the speaking in tongues shit is yeah. wild too. It's my crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Did they send yeah. you back down into the pews? Yeah, yeah she moved on because oh, she okay. knew she wasn't going to be able to yep. 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 Uh, 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 I just want a reality TV show of you two guys going around and being in the audience <laughs> of all these types of things and just like ruining their whole show. Can we just call it, right, can we call it I Call Bullshit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to do that. Yeah. I would yeah. love that. That'd be my favorite Sean. thing ever. We need to do well. Yeah. 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 So you guys have to go to Vegas and hit up every single hypnotist and magician there. For, That's like, fine. That's the first season. I can do that. Like, like, has anyone your, seen Chris Angel? We need to find yeah. Yeah. Right. Give me your best <laughs> shot. Mm-hmm. Does it be for YouTube? <laughs> no, so, no, I, no, I want to take. I know it's yeah. dying. Oh, oh, I know it's Sean, dying. Sean, we need, we, need, Sean, we need to trademark this as producers so that we can all get money on this. Uh, right. So, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Sell it. To I call bullshit. We uh, TV. Uh, copyright 2024 <laughs> Saturday Night Freak Show Productions. TLC would buy that shit. You see, yeah. that? definitely. Yeah. Yeah. The we're gonna, we're gonna learn you something, yeah, sure. which is gonna be in the promo. <laughs> well, Netflix just hands people money. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure we can yeah, get it just for the idea. Um, we can do that. Okay, so is anybody listening? Sorry, I was in a say was it just me or because it had been a long time since I saw this movie yes. but I was trying to figure out Donald Sutherland's relationship with Elizabeth and I was like they're very familiar is yep. there feelings there or when Jeff Goldblum came into play I'm like are Jeff Goldblum and Don Sutherland lovers did you get and that vibe? he and Elizabeth are just like really close like in a platonic way because at first I got that vibe before we found out that Jeff Goldblum was married I didn't I get that vibe. I, yeah. I, I got that vibe because they were very close to and very familiar. I, I feel like, like they've known each other for a long yeah. time. And they were sp- it's a really weird social close. circle that <laughs> yeah. like yeah, Jeff Goldblum's a poet, but he owns a spa and somehow hobnobs in <laughs> the same poets circles. Because need to have more than... Just- okay, because this, poets this can never you, just get they, by on poetry you know, ever this at is all. such a fucking 70s pipe dream <laughs> that a poet would be rich enough to own a fucking business. I'm so, That's how I'm looking at it. Well, he inherited the spas from his parents and then he married. Yeah, yeah. This no, is such like a beat dream. Business. Oh, yeah. definitely it was a family, yeah, it was a family business. business. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, like yeah. he wants to be a poet, but he has to run the business because you don't make shit as a poet. Yeah. No, ever. So he's like a nepo baby is like I this is what I really want to do with my career, but I Can you call it a Nepo baby if the only thing you get is a mud spa place? Well, like, that's I'm more, like I didn't inherit any family businesses, did you? I mean There was also like, a steam soaker. But I'm just saying he's he's got an income. <laughs> substantial enough that he can do poetry. Mm, that's well, so that's it, it a position seems of like, privilege. Yeah. Like but his wife's got to touch people. I was going to say, yeah. it seems like his wife is running the business so well he yeah. does his poetry thing. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. God bless so, her for what she does. Yeah. Yeah. She's slapping people's she's feet like really and shit. really into it. But that means Donald Sutherland is friends with the psychiatrist and the 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 guy who runs the, the spa? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just, he, he knows a lot of people. As a health inspector, you yeah, uh, do a lot of circles. You don't have friends in very different professions. There you go, I guess. Yeah, you do. I probably do. You're you right. Do? Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, you but, can call bullshit on that one. I call bullshit. Okay. Shout out to all you people that have jobs that involve touching people because Ugh. I don't. Yeah, and watching this movie, I can't imagine doing it. Mm-mm. She was like, just rubbing that dude's belly. I just mm, touching strangers for a living. You can't pay me enough. I don't. Mm-hmm. I you, you're a special kind of person if you do that for your job. Mm-hmm. I salute you. Couldn't be me. Only in San Francisco. Or the red light district anywhere. <laughs> I, was gonna say, I, I just don't want to touch strangers ever. Oh. I was gonna say, I've gotten massages before. I 
Props to you. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's yeah. Takes you, a special I person. Salute you. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, they find a body in the uh, mud bathroom, and it looks suspiciously like Jeff Goldblum. It mm-hmm. takes them a little while to figure this out. It happens while you sleep, and eventually it bleeds from the nose because he's been punched in the nose. Right. They don't destroy this body. So my question is again: if he falls asleep for like five seconds later, does this thing wake up? Because they didn't yeah. get rid of it. Um, yeah, I'm wondering what the proximity is to in, where they have to be to a body like this because later right. on something happens where uh, a character disintegrates, like yeah, Raiders cool. of the Lost Ark. It was mm-hmm. gross, yeah. yeah. I d- the sound design in this movie makes everything so much more impactful. Sound it's design really is very good. good. Sound design, really yes. good. but like the crunch when like that head disintegrates is really gross. And I, I, I don't, I'm kind of like a sound sensitive person. And the scene when when Donald Sutherland's on the phone and Jeff Goldblum's talking over him. That sound design was mixed really well because I was like, oh my God, both of you shut the fuck up. Like, that's how I felt in that scene. And I think that was the point. You know? Well, that's what I thought. But, like, yeah. a lot of the movie, because um, somebody, I can't remember who said it earlier, was that, you know, it was like this travel log kind of like, I was like, it was the whole movie created an anxiety. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's mm-hmm. very, it, people talking over each yes. other. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of sound mm-hmm. uh, that's. Everything you know, is very chaotic. The yeah. camera, yes. yeah. in the, there was a scene where um, they have broken into, I think, Elizabeth's bedroom because Donald Sutherland saw her double body in there. Yeah. And so they yeah. come in later with the cops, everybody's shouting at each other. The camera's like up everybody's noses, floating around yes. the apartment to try. And it was yep. like, oh my God. There's even some. Like step into like really yeah. close ups mm-hmm. on on Jeff and everything. So yeah, mm-hmm. and the chase scenes later were like all of us in the dark, and I can't tell who's chasing who, and mm-hmm. I don't know if that was by design or they just didn't have the light. Mm-hmm. But it was I like, imagine it's by design, you know, for it was, movie like this. Yeah, mm-hmm. anxiety, anxiety. In the movie, it's got like yeah. a kind of a creeping. It's eerie, right? For yeah. being like an alien invasion movie, mm-hmm. it feels kind of like. A zombie movie in a lot of ways, does it? Yeah, kind of does. Yeah. Yeah. Did you think that the beginning of it, like, kind of had that kind of, you know, the 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 Dawn of the Dead remake, where it's like this is the morning of the apocalypse. Mm -hmm. Somebody wakes up and like you're watching is kind of like the movie had like a longer version of that. It felt like. Yeah. Mm. It's a long time before we actually see the pods. I think right. Yeah, they're gross when we see them. Like (laughs) they're really gross. Like. I see those commercials for Dr. Pimple Popper and I have to like change the channel because <laughs> oh, I can't boy. even watch the fucking commercial. And that's what this looked like to me. It looked far too much like a mass that shouldn't be there. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, because we watch these things getting birthed uh, yeah. naked into the world of goo and yeah. you know, crying and writhing. Yeah, and so everything's wet and hairy at the same time. Oh, it's don't so say that. gross. Ugh. Yeah. Wet and then, and hairy. It is. It's so awful. Yeah. What do they do? It's stringy. That's the worst detective agency ever. <laughs> wet and hairy. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do they do with your body once you have been uh, snatched? You, you, I mean, it's slowly like... As we see in certain characters throughout the movie, like the, they start to dry up. A lot of them are drinking water as, as they're be- slowly falling victim to these things. But like they get dry around the mouth and the face, and it's like the somehow they're sucking all the nutrients that from the person's body into the new copy. Like they need to take that from one to the other. So they're, they they are just drying up. They're becoming crusty. And that's why I was thinking, like, that first scene, like, you're not aware of what you're watching at that point, but when Elizabeth's boyfriend takes out the trash the morning after, right, he, yeah, yeah. he dumps this, like, you, you know, pile of ash, but I'm like, oh, that's, well, it's either the pod, the remnant of the pod, mm-hmm. or it's, that's the body that crumbled. Mm-hmm. I guess right. at the, by the right, end of the yeah, movie, yeah. we know that that's what happens to you. It's like, so all that webbing and all that shit in the dumpsters is people yeah you know <laughs> yes <laughs> they've been it copied. is people because he did fall asleep next to a pod next to a flower yeah, yeah. would take him over mm-hmm. there was uh i don't remember this in the original maybe it was there there was a scene there's like a it's like a uh, just a cutaway at some point they walk through like a park and there's this uh old guy playing was oh he playing God. the guitar and he's got a dog a banjo yeah he's playing a banjo mm-hmm. he's got a, and he's got a dog oh yeah and later Uh, we see him and his dog asleep with a pod next to them. And as they're going by, this is like when they know what's going on. So they kick it and it like bleeds. Mm -hmm. And then Mm -hmm. later 
<laughs> this is what I remember the most. You messed up the frequency. <laughs> and then this, later we get oh. a dog, a human face dog. I it's, really hate I it. forgot about that part. It was I, horrifying. How could you forget? That's what I, the only thing I remember from I, this I movie the, was that dog. I think the first time I watched this, I fell asleep during certain parts. Or I was in and out of them because I didn't remember the end of this movie taking so long. Um, so I, I, maybe I don't think I saw that part because, wow, because he's got the, the human face on the dog and then the dog licks and it comes to the human face's mouth. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it looks so good. It's unnerving. It looks so and good. I hate it. It's ugh. just like the way the eyes line up perfectly is just, ugh, ugh. I just, yeah, this is, that was a good one. It's, it's, it's almost more disturbing that it's like a throwaway thing in this movie and not yeah. the actual right, focus it of this movie. Right, it wasn't you know? featured yeah. more so. They're just like, oh, yeah. we're going to horrify you for here five seconds. Yeah, like, but you don't remember it. I had a flashback. It made me. Re- it reminded me of how much like um, spliced species there are in poor things. There's uh, a lot of like are there? Yeah. species um, like experimentation in that movie. Interesting. And it's very. It's like that. It's very mm. jarring like that. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. Watch this movie. Yeah. Mon- rat monkeys and stuff like that. <laughs> um, I'm still gonna see it. Uh, yes. and still playing it. Okay. Um, see it. <laughs> so there's that kind of a uh, sense of, uh, like the encroachment of doom. They're calling, uh, you know, trying to, to call Washington at some point, but mm-hmm. an operator gets on. Everybody knows their phone, their name. So Everybody it's like the name. They're all, every phone call says, now don't tell anybody, keep this to yourself. We yeah. don't want to cause a mass panic. Are they the only, the last humans in the city by the end of this movie? Seems like. I mean, yeah. it sure does as feel like it, right? Tell, yeah. Because yeah. mm-hmm. then there's the big chase, right? Where mm-hmm. like there's just people running through the streets, yeah. uh, chasing after them. Yeah, like the police out in the open at a certain point. They're they're on bullhorns, just sending pods to people. Mm-hmm. Come here, collect it, take it home to your families. Merry Christmas. Which, like, at this point, what what are what is your best case scenario at this point, right? Like, mm-hmm. what what is going to happen? You might as well just fucking <laughs> here's this millennial edge. You might as well lay down and just fucking let it happen. Cause no, that's so what you know. That's like, exactly what I was saying like, earlier. At I'm this like, point, I'm what do you need to do? Like, I, I I admire Donald Sutherland's resolve, and then it's like, nah, we'll figure it out. We'll do something. Oh, you know, like, yeah. yeah. Well, he's gonna because he, he says, I don't know what it is, but I'm gonna fight it. He says, you know, later on, like when his friends are. Pods are like we're gonna somebody's gonna fight you. Mm-hmm. It's like, but this is it, this is a fatalistic kind of it really movie. Is. It's like there's no beating this thing. I mean, no. it's already because, and then I, I like it when characters come in and you know uh, the realization that they have turned and they are different people because Jeff Goldblum comes back at a certain point. Other people come back. It reminds me of that one scene. I think Colin will be the only one who uh, appreciates this from Life Force. Where the guy walks into the office, uh, it's later on in the movie, and he's talking to him, and you and you slowly realize that. Oh he's yeah, like, yeah, he's yeah. just like, oh, I love that scene. <laughs> I thought of the other body snatch movie. Fast forward thirty seconds for spoilers. <laughs> uh, significant other. Ah, that oh, was the one. Yeah. 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 We did watch that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was an alien. I was thinking. I was thinking movie. existence for some reason. I'm like, well, that's kind, but not really. It's that's more right. technological yeah. based. Yeah. But mm-hmm. yes, yeah, significant other. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're right. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was within the last year or so. That I was think last year. Last yeah. year. I don't know. Well, maybe yeah. it might have been two years ago. Maybe. No, it might have been like time too. Goes fast. Yep. So and it's not on our. We did an episode on it. Go listen yeah, to go it. Listen. Also, significant other. There's a climax to this movie. Well, I guess okay. Before we get there, um, you know, Donald, Donald Sutherland and uh, Brooke Adams and Veronica Cartwright are yeah. our last uh, uh, people, mm-hmm. and they are they find. Which I guess, you know, it's like these movies kind of have to build to something. It just kind of the scope of it keeps getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. To the point where you find like the hydroponics farm that the, uh, you know, that everybody's using to, to actually grow these pods. and Yeah, in mass, yeah. And so we have to destroy it. There's a big scene where... We didn't uh, have to. This is the part where this movie kind of gets too long. Like, what is this, two hours or something? Movie? It's about two hours, yeah. Yeah, there is, yeah the, we could have condensed. There's a few parts in this we could have condensed, especially at the end of this movie, where there is just a lot of chasing and running and stuff like that. Mm. But does it is, is that, does that scene exist because it gives you the sense that there's a win for the character? Yeah, Maybe. I think so, because you don't want it to just be just downhill for them the entire time. Mm-hmm. That it, That it is an that it is inescapable for them. Yeah. You want to give them, like you said, you want to give them something, a win of some sort. Like there is a way to fight back or, you know, in, in some small way uh, that it's not too huge to overcome. You want to give the audience something like maybe, maybe there's hope. 
Yeah. So it does give him that. And because he says something, we got to figure out a way to stop him. He ends up like basically setting the plant on fire, the plant, the the, the facility where they grow right. the plants. But this is just one thing and what yeah, feels it's already... like a massive <laughs> operation at this point. <laughs> There's so many of them in the wild at this point yeah. that it's like, what are you going to do? Um, there's a love story that takes place the entire way through the movie. Um, and the movie kind of goes from with the uh, Brooke Adams character where it's like, she believes something. No one else will listen to her. Donald Sutherland is kind of like empathetic, but then he sees it with his own eyes and becomes like a true believer. Then he's going to take care of Mm -hmm. the situation. There's a unrequited, there it is, I guess requited love they like each other yeah no, they like each other and then the circumstances there. bring them together yeah and since her boyfriend's already a pod person and so we don't feel bad about this and right but it's like i guess the idea is that like i love you tonight tomorrow we're not gonna even really care about right. each other or anything mm-hmm. yeah uh if these things take us over and she gets pod person she does i have a question okay about this scene because it's pg and you're like how'd they pull this yeah. up okay. well i mean again, when, <laughs> yeah. certain thing yeah again <laughs> yeah but no but like she um, at a certain point it becomes like you can't fall asleep because they take mm-hmm. speed to try and stay awake and everything like i'm it probably can't be answered because i'm asking about the science of the movie which is kind of at certain yeah, but that's what we're here for well Don't i know but always right, right. on the case all right so uh, uh she ends up falling asleep in a field not near a pod, for all we know. But again, she falls asleep. Don Sutherland comes back to her. She, this is where she disintegrates, and then rise. You know, a pod person rises mm-hmm. from the weeds. Mm-hmm. Like what was like? How they're like, literally outside of the pod plant. Yeah, yeah, but like, I got the idea that these things are just like all over the yeah. place. Prob- there. I mean, probably, but it also feels like what? What is? Uh, I still ask about like what? How close do you have to be if you're farther away from your? replicant like does it still work like if you fall asleep because yeah. if Goldwyn was like falling asleep and he's deteriorating like do you have to be close to them Did, I like, think the, I, it, this movie is saying that the tendrils have to be touching you in order for it yeah. to, right. to I can to take replicate. that they're, they're in a field with weeds and everything there's yeah. a pod there sure yeah I can get that yeah yeah. Okay. so it's tragic that uh, love dies up, yeah. and, and like in, in his arms she collapses and so then there's just him and then he's got to he's got to make it the next day. And so the next day, yes, right. This is like an interesting sequence in the movie. I think I guess. they showed too much. Okay, during this scene. So it's the morning after, and and he we see Donald Sutherland. We've already established that like we can fool them. We can move among right. them if we just don't show emotion. Right, because Veronica Cartwright. We've run back into her later on in the movie after they've been separated. And you're, I mean, I was kind of questioning when I first saw this, like, all right, is she correct in that she's saying you can fool them if you just act like a certain way, they won't notice. You you wonder, like, is she still a human? Is she trying to fool them to get them to come with her? So there's questions mm-hmm. about her um, in, in that regard. But so, like you said, we established that, yeah, you can fool them if you just act a certain way. And then we get to the next day where we're going from night with Donald Sutherland to the next morning where he's on the street kind of watching people still. And we're like, okay. You think they show too much? I think that I think they show him doing because they're they're trying to make you think. Because last we saw him, he was human, and we mm. come to the next morning, but he's going about his normal routine within, um, uh, within the stuff he's been doing before. But again, he's surrounded by pod people at this point. We know because we see Brooke Adams in her position, but she's a pod person. Everyone around him. So we're questioning as we go through this, like, all right. Is he, do we see glances on his face? Is he looking at these people like he's trying to blend in? Uh, not is like, what, what is he, where is he at at this point? But I think he goes through too much of his routine to, uh, uh, if it, it felt more yeah, like he, he they was, tip their hand that I think he's, uh, that's like, that okay, he is a pop person. person. I think, I, I think I, for me, I think they did. I know what they're trying to do. They want to make you guess it yeah, up until so the very the end. end is a surprise. But right. what I liked about it, knowing, I guess because the ending of this movie is kind of like gone into, you know, like pop culture mm-hmm. medium, yes. <laughs> yeah. right? We know that he's going to go the and then make, gif, yeah, yeah. Uh, he points and he, his mouth opens and he right. squeals. Because yeah, so. there is the screaming from the pod people yes. that yeah. is coming later on, which is very unnerving. I did like that. Mm-hmm. So, but what the scene, so then knowing that, right, it's interesting to see, like, this is the post pod, uh, pod person, 
world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's like, so he wanders around and he looks at people and you're like, well, what the pod person, what's he thinking? You know what? He, he, he goes back to clip stuff, newspapers. Yeah. He goes to work, clips newspapers. Is he clipping something that he cares about? Or he's just doing it because like, oh, I remember doing this. Right. And then eventually he folds it and just sets it down. Well, he puts it in his pocket. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. Yep. It's like, I remember doing that. Mm-hmm. And then he joins a group who's leaving the building and everything. And that's how, like, their telepathy works. It's just we see the herd going, so we follow right. the right. herd. Like, well, I guess we're going somewhere to do something. Right. And, <laughs> you, you, know? and you wonder, is he, like, is he trying to figure stuff out, a way to to keep infiltrating the group to figure out a way to stop this? Is he a pot person? Like, you're questioning that. I, I suppose it does work. Maybe it's just me. that Through this entire sequence, uh, we question it. And then Veronica Cartwright, we hear Matthew. And you yeah. know she comes up out of thing because she's still around and everything, um, and she's still human. But then we get you know Donald Sutherland. But it's that it's the scenes. Yeah, I guess that's where we're going. But I was saying like if you if you assume that if you now that we know that he's a pod person, yeah. it's like he does go and look at Elizabeth. Yeah. But what's he thinking at that point? It's like because she takes no notice of him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's kind of like, well, there she is. You know, it's like, is it that kind of memory? And like, never are we going to because I just like, wonder, is he just remembering? Oh, I walk into this office and see her. And yeah. I leave. I, and you see, I don't know. Do we see like pod people pairs on the street? Like, do they pair up for whatever? I mean, or do they see, just not we care see people about walking anything? together? Yeah. Yeah. Why? But, but we wonder if there's any more to it than then just like you are a pod person so am I mm-hmm. we should walk together and yeah. remember there's that scene when like the kids are getting off the school bus and mm-hmm. going into the building together yeah like, I don't like, want to take a nap <laughs> <laughs> they seem pretty normal <laughs> well I mean they are normal I think they're being taken to be potted yeah, to be to that's be. why they said they don't want to take a nap they're just like I don't want to take a nap why are we going here mm-hmm. yeah. potting those people oh that's true yeah. and the eeriness I guess of um, all these people in that scene where he joins them walking down the hall mm. it's like nobody talks to each other yeah. nobody does you know it's like it's completely silent they just kind of you know they they pack an elevator mm-hmm. and nobody says or does it. Michaela must love this. It's like, I don't know. This is, goes to Michaela's bog witch yeah, lifestyle. That she's looking forward to. It's like, oh, no one said a word to people. me today. It's great. Yes. <laughs> see, that's the thing. Like, you ever see that Trials of Horror, the Omega Man, where Homer survives the, apoc- the, the apocalypse? Yeah. And he just, that, like, yeah, that's. That sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> I didn't see a problem with it. This is a, this is a hopeful that. movie yeah. for Michaela. <laughs> <laughs> I brought this because I love it. Well, that's why you want to bring invasion. You're like, you got, yeah, you, just, do you guys like this? Because I like this. Yeah. I remember that going a very different way at the end. Then it becomes like a big a action movie or something. Some, but yeah. people jump off buildings. I don't know. It's a whole thing. Yeah. I guess we'll have to find out. Yeah. Yeah. Said it's Daniel Craig yeah. and Nicole Kidman. Get a wait like a year. The invasion. Or make it a summer mm-hmm. movie. Yeah. yeah. All right. Any stray observations about scenes that you wanted to talk about that we didn't uh, cover in the uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers? Veronica Cartwright really knows how to freak out when she's confronted with an Oh, yeah. She's good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right. Well, uh, thank you for listening. We're going to go around the table and tell you whether or not uh, you should watch the movie when we uh, tell you what we thought about it individually. But first, we're going to summon our mailman. His name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. He was definitely birthed out of a pot at, in one of his lives, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. he's, he's still yeah. wearing the like the Many. flower the casing <laughs> on his yeah his, his collar, yeah. <laughs> oh, the awesome. sleeve. Yeah, oh. it was sleeve. And he molts every he, now and again. He, so he sleeps, sleeps in his pot. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> just, yeah, gets back into it. Yeah, uh, so gross. gross. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, thank little, you, Igor. Little, little hop, um, we should let the good folks at home know how they can participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or X, formerly Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Uh, you can email us directly. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on threads and Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. About tonight's movie, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, Steve Carney writes in, 
and says the original Invasion of the Body Snatchers has three remakes. More if you count movies like Assimilate from 2019. Yep. They're very of their time, but I like that they're all different from each other. Are we putting the faculty in there? Is that more thing or is that Invasion oh, of the Body Oh, a good one. Yeah, That's, faculty yeah. Is. Sure. That's a good one. Yep. Uh, you should Julie. watch it, Michaela. <laughs> I was going to say, what was that? I couldn't even remember the name. What was the Katie Holmes one that we watched that was very disturbing, disturbing behavior? behavior. Uh, yeah. 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 The Stafford Wives thing. Yep. Yeah, it's yeah. A whole, yeah. Like, See, that's the, it, the only way it changes over time is it becomes less about germs and more about technology. That's just how it changes. Yeah, but, and then they get know. tired of the technology yeah. and they go back to and, germs. Yeah. And, mm. yeah. Or even that, there was that... Um, Black Mirror episode where Haley Atwell gets her wife or her husband replaced after he dies. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And I saw that yeah, one. Yeah. I mean, it's fucking sad. Jesus Christ. What a yeah. bleak episode. But mm-hmm. yeah, that's the same thing. But is that, it's always like it's tied in like the, you know, like the anxieties of the time. Yes. Like, oh, yeah. Like, is it the technology yeah. eventually comes back around to the germ or mm-hmm. like yeah, COVID hits and then it's yeah. like, yeah. all right, germs. But yeah. it's like about out. losing yeah, it's like everybody becomes... Losing humanity. Losing is what humanity, it is. what you were it, before. That Black Mirror episode was absolutely about losing humanity because they even hit on in that episode, like, the, the like, android version of him is, like, better at sex and better at a lot of things. But she's like, but that's not my husband. Like, <laughs> and that's kind of the thesis of that. Yeah. yeah, it's fucking sad. Don't watch it. It's a bummer of an episode. <laughs> that put me off of Black Mirror for, like, months. Oh. Well, Chili Morrison writes in oh, and Chili. says, "Yay! This is a rare time where I can watch the movie for the first time just because, or just before listening to your podcast. There you go. Good oh, job, no. Igor. There you go. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome." Uh, Michael Whitaker says, "The scene where the kids are being brought in by the busload to be taken over by the pods hits differently when you've had children. Kind yeah. of part of the reason why I've never really revisited this movie in the last few years. But what else can you say about a movie about this movie other than it's a classic? This is one of the rare examples of a remake being really good, possibly surpassing the original. Mm-hmm. Also." I watched the original with my dad, and that was the first time I ever saw the story. And in his memory, I simply cannot say it's totally better than the original. However, There's so many do different. We, do we mention that whenever we talk about like the blob, the fly, the yeah. thing, mm-hmm. invasion of the body snatchers, right. Right? or Evil such, Dead? The just such yeah. different eras, though, that. To say one is better than the other, I mean, like... Yeah, they're completely different types of movies. Yeah, yeah. they really are. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can, you know, compare and contrast little things, but I think you really... Just because of the still, times they come from, you got to look at them as... But it still is an accomplishment to remake a movie and make it your own and it yes. still be good. That yes. is really hard to do. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Travis Legler says, I knew about the famous ending of this movie before I ever saw it. I feel this yes. movie is like It's a Wonderful Life and that it's been parodied so many times that you know the beats of the film without actually having to see it. However, I finally sat down and I watched the movie beginning to end about three years ago. It's an unimpeachable classic. Good acting, storytelling, and atmosphere. Even the dog with the human face is creepy, yeah. but makes you not want to look away. Indeed. Yeah. Yep. Or- Millitime says, uh, I've seen the ending of this movie parodied several times, the point in the terrible scream. It's nice to see the origin of it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Apple Eva says, oh, yeah, it's one of the most effective and haunting movies ever. It's a masterpiece. The Newfeld says, it's so good. Wow, people uh, really did vote for this one. Yeah, they really did. One person. Like, yeah, okay, all right, all right. <laughs> Bashaw, foolery says. <laughs> Bashaw. Donald Sutherland had a fro for days. He definitely got invited to the barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. He's, I like his look in this movie. It's working for him. Yeah. I think it, it's good, iconic. It's a good look. Yeah. Yeah, because he's had a mustache and other. Yeah, I was saying, yeah, yeah like, it always throws mustache. me off because I'm I'm not used I'm used to older Donald Sutherland. Yeah, he doesn't same. Fight yeah. Low, the it's curly like hair, games the curly hair always throws me yeah. off because I've never seen him with curly hair, and yeah. I'm, it's the older, earlier stuff. Um, was he in the Dirty Dozen? <laughs> was he like the? Mm. Yes, he was. Yeah, yeah, he was the. Yeah, I don't he think was like he's the second in command guy. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Yep. Robin Lineman Silverberg said, we did it good this year, even with witchery. <laughs> yeah. I revisit Body Snatchers every couple of years during spooky season. The pug slash man, that's the dog, yeah, dog man, yeah, yeah. Uh, never fails to freak me out and make me laugh. It's, yeah. uh, it is it's, it's If you forget it, it's shocking when it holds like, ah. How, how did they do that? Do you think it is a little, a mask little mask on a dog? Yeah. And that's why yeah. it looks so good. Yeah. I think that's how they get the dog, like, licking Ugh. its tongue through the, yeah. the uh. mouth hole of the. It's, yeah, it, it, it <laughs> almost looks like CGI. I'm just like, but that yeah, didn't exist that, at this yeah, point. Yeah, I'm exactly. just like, it looks good. Uh, last week, we watched a movie called Ricky O, the story of Ricky. <laughs> yeah, good job did. on that one, folks. Yeah. 
Uh, Dom, you missed a uh, bloodbath. One of the most violent movies I've ever seen. My God. <laughs> uh, Dom Cree writes in and says, I resent the implied accusatory vibes from Colin and Sean regarding the voting results. I didn't even have to call in a favor from my internet pals this time. Yeah. <laughs> Notice we did not mention Dom when we said that it might have been rigged. So I think Dom... Per- <laughs> Guilty. Dom out out has too much. Yeah. <laughs> Dom. Uh, you gave yourself up, bro. <laughs> Uh, the week before, we watched the movie that you also chose called Behind the Mask. Adam Kaler says, as much as I love this movie, I don't think it needs a sequel. I think the story it told wanted, or I think it told the story it wanted, and a lot of movies mm-hmm. don't need sequels. I believe I they were going to do a comic book follow-up when they couldn't get funding for a second film. Maybe Stop. they should make a toothpaste or a breakfast cereal. Just, <laughs> just you know, why is one not <laughs> enough? Leave it why is yeah. one not good enough? Just like, yeah, you can one and done. Yeah. Let it we're good. Well, Chris Gierowski says there is a two. It's a comic book. And he sent a link. Yes, indeed. There is Before the Mask. I, I, okay, under- I understand that people go that route, but who? I don't want No to. offense. I, who I, I gives not, a shit? I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, that, that is what my own comic, personal comic opinion. Book I hate and the prequels. comic book no. fucking sequels <laughs> or prequels. It's, it's this, no, uh, what, yeah, what, what is on screen matters, and if it's not there, fuck it. It's it just doesn't like when matter. someone's like, oh, here's a fan film. No, no, no. no, 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 no nope. No. Don't that's I think maybe that's why what I feel about them. I'm just like, what if... The fan. Enjoy them, fine. I, if, I love that you love them, but fuck. But what if it was co-written by Scott? Glass don't then, no, don't okay. care because I've had there've been filmmakers who's like, oh, we wrote this previous comic that will bridge the gap between this movie and that. I, I don't, don't need every give a shit gap bridged. I don't need to <laughs> no, know no every gap single bridged. thing. Like if it's important, narrative. you put it in the movie. If it's yeah. not, I don't give a shit. Yeah. Let's face I, it, nobody reads comics. No. A lot of people read comics, and I don't want to uh, poo poo. I don't like. I just. I don't want to poo poo any of that stuff. Love it if you love it. I just don't care. Comic people get extensions of their favorite stories. Well, I know, good for but them. You know, you know what? And I, maybe I should understand it more because it's like I'm, as much your as I like sequels. What, what? Your DVD bonus features. Too, I mean, well, it's no, it's like more like that. getting a sequel to something, and you know, you like where they can take something you've seen and where they can expand and all that stuff. So it's like getting a sequel to something, which I love, but. It's not a movie. Okay. What if they adapt That's a it. script that didn't? <laughs> oh my, okay, no, I'm done with you. I'm done with you. Comics, yeah. uh, Mark Harrison writes in and said, "I didn't like the whole Ahab joke. It seemed redundant to me." I like Ahab it. is he's got an Ahab. He's just, yeah, yeah he's obsessed. It like yeah, it's funny. That was funny. Super obsessed. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, works for me. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, each of you, for yes, writing in. Thank you. Thank you for writing in. Thank you for for voting. Yes. 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 Right. yes. Thank you. It's been we appreciate it's it. Pretty good end of another. Uh, we start off season. on a rocky foot, but we got to watch the Hoff for <laughs> the Hoff do <laughs> little for an yeah. hour and a half. So, but yeah. yeah. So it was witchery. It was uh, behind the mask. Yeah. The rise of Leslie Vernon, Ricky. Oh, the story, story of Ricky, Ricky and invasion of the body snatchers. Michaela. Oh. <laughs> We're gonna tell you what we thought of. What did you think of tonight's movie? The number one pick for listener pick month. 1978's <laughs> Invasion of the Body Snatcher, starring Donald Sutherland and other people. What do you think? <laughs> I I think we always talk about the remake Holy Trinity on the Freak oh, Show, right? Oh, is I'm going to do the, the cross motion. We're going to do yeah, we've established the cur- the fly, the thing, and the blob. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, that's right. that's yeah. the remake Holy right, Trinity, right? right? Okay, yeah, yeah. Like three perfect. I will say they are perfect films and expanded upon their source material in a way that was new and interesting and better than the original mm. um i think it's got to be a holy quadrant rhombus holy rhombus because i think it's we gotta rhombus. add invasion the of the body rhombus. snatchers i <laughs> think that's rhombus. the forgotten corner of the rhombus uh, here um yeah i had seen it that's why it's a rhombus because it doesn't it's yep. not exactly equal some exactly are some are closer some blower, are farther yeah. you know yeah exactly um and and it's fluid you know you can push the corners in and make yes. it stretch yeah um you know I think this is a forgotten film in that sense when we speak of the the remake Holy Trinity. I think that um, it doesn't come to mind because it has been reduced to a reaction gif, unfortunately. But, I mean... You do got to kind of bring it yeah. out of that and be like, it's more than just Donald Sutherland pointing at right. something. But I do think sometimes funny. those things do help people discover content. Sure. So that's mm-hmm. always... A, it's good for a movie to always have a presence like that. So that's cool that a movie that is like 50-some years old has a reaction gift that is still popular. Like, the staying power is is there. Um, I The thing I love about body snatcher movies is that the reason why they're so timeless is because there are so many different interpretations you can take away from a body snatcher movie. It could be about... Um, cultural assimilation. It can be about 
um, like racial assim- assimilation. It can be about class like, systems. Uh, and class shit. systems. It could be about body identity and how you feel yeah. in your own physical body. You can really project any of your own personal problems yeah. onto a yeah. body snatcher. You can movie. do a lot with it, and that's why it'll never go away. And that's why it'll yeah. always be redone. And I'm fine with it because I enjoy it most times when I see it. Um, whether it's technology or germs or yeah, aliens. usually they can yeah. find it an works. interesting yeah. avenue to exactly. go. Exactly, yeah. and there, it seems like Looking there's always you get out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's about racial assimilation, yeah, you know? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So um, whatever type of code switching and blending in with the herd you've had to do to survive fits within a narrative of a body snatcher movie. That's really cool. Um, and that's why it's timeless. But to see it in the context of the 70s, knowing like the cultural and political landscape makes it more interesting. Mm-hmm. So you got to watch it. It's great. Special effects look so good. I couldn't couldn't believe it. Um, and it's just tense and suspenseful. And it's well done. It's well shot. It's it's just great all around good mm-hmm. definitely recommend it. it you'll get a lot out of it and i think you'll be surprised sean what do you think um i agree with a lot of what you said mm-hmm. um my only uh, my only problem and it's a nitpick is is it's too long it's uh, it a long. It's, it's a little too long like we uh, there's a lot of running around in the back half of this movie but other than that like the atmosphere is very good um it's very tense uh I, I, just I, I really like the like you know uh, uh, just a group of people in the middle of the night. And the bigger thing is going on in the world, but we focus on the small group of people trying to deal with it. And as helpless as it might be, it's really interesting to stick with those characters and 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 watch them try and figure this whole thing out. What's going on? Um, what's happening to them? What they're going to do about it? Um, and it's done by uh, uh, a great cast. Um, uh, the story again is kind of just classic and like you discussed like what you can do with it the different element the social elements you can bring into it um it, I think it's shot really well I, uh, I think the location it being in San Francisco really lends to um a, a lot of this because it feels like we you know it feels like the movie kind of goes down in levels as it goes on like the more paranoia we get like the the, the the lower we go in the city, you know, because there's literal chase scenes, you know, going downstairs and everything. Um, Cinematography is great. There's a lot of um, stuff that's comparable to the uh, original movie, um, which was which is also a pretty good one. Um, yeah, I, it, it is a it is a classic. It's a very good movie. Um, yeah, it's uh, I, I mean, I'll, I'll definitely recommend it. Um, yeah, it's a good time. Like even even if it is a little long, like it's not it's not too much of a too long movie. Um, yeah, you have fun with it, and the, really the atmosphere. It's fun to live in with these people and the paranoia that they experience, and you know what they're trying to figure out. So yeah, it's it's a good movie. Um, this is only my second time watching it, but yeah, this this is a good one. I like this. Um, so yeah, I recommend it. Holly, what'd you think? Yeah. So um, oh, I love the. I love that this was the number one choice for our listeners. Um, yeah. I think, you know, we try not to pick movies that are so spot on. So it's like, oh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. That one's so obvious. It's like, <laughs> it's not, though, <laughs> because I love that a movie like this, it gets lost in, like, the catacombs of being like, oh, it's a silly movie because of the title. Like, oh, it's that 70s, like, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Like, it's going to be this gratuitous, like, sci-fi movie. But it's actually, like, a really good movie. Right. Or it becomes so infamous yeah. that you just, you don't go to it. It's like, oh. Yeah. Obviously, Invasion it's of the Body Snatchers. O- yeah, that title obvious. alone is just like right. known. And I think, like, my parents, since when they asked me what we were watching, I, they were instantly like, oh, we didn't watch that movie. And I'm like, because they think it's going to be like a silly movie, right? Just title alone. But I think people don't realize it's a legitimately good movie. This is not a lowbrow movie. Like, the cinematography is gorgeous, it's well written, it's just it's suspenseful. It's a legitimately good story, and it's a, it, the characters are well written, it's thought out. I, I, it's a great movie you know I think people don't give it enough credit um, I think it has you know the meme reputation mm-hmm. and I, yeah, I I think it gets overlooked a lot for being as credible as it is um, yeah I think you guys said everything else like no notes you guys did <laughs> you guys said it no this is, this is a legitimately good movie it it, it, it is long but I, was, I didn't feel like it was that long like it's interesting the whole way through. Like I'm a little sleepy, so that's why I thought it was a little long. But it's just it's interesting the whole way through. I I, I enjoy this movie thoroughly. Don't fall asleep, Holly. Um, I know you, I'm so tired. You <laughs> no, I see I, you're drying up already. Drink some water. I'm really okay with falling asleep. <laughs> Take me, please. Um, yeah, no, this is a great movie. I highly recommend. I I agree. I think we have encountered the holy rhombus of remakes for sure. Rhombus. Would you put Evil Dead in there? 
the new the remake of it. Uh, that is it better than the original? No. Oh, better than oh, the original? No. Than the original. no because no, it's, I would, yeah, it's, I would it's a different no. caliber. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's a different caliber. Yeah, because and then plus most yeah. of the ones we're talking about with the Holy Trin- Trinity or the Rhombus, like we, we it like black and white to a different like it, yeah. is, it really feels like Arrows two different apart, eras. Yeah. yeah. There's Whereas Evil Dead, I know it is, well, I'm, but it's still like <laughs> Evil Dead. You can still go back to, and it's not it's completely a different yeah, era. Yeah. In that, it, I mean, they're still. You know, you I, don't, no, I don't feel this, the, it feels no, like, this is a Colin on the street question for like I want to ask a bunch of Gen Z kids what they think. Yeah. Like, the, they, and then the Gen Z kids are gonna look at me like, "What is Evil Dead?" Yeah, <laughs> probably. What oh, Evil Dead Rise. I like that movie. Yeah. And then we're all gonna be like, oh, yeah. and "No, then, they'll be like Evil Dead Rise." I saw that movie, yeah. and that's gonna be it. And I'm gonna let the pods take me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I recommend this for sure. Colin, take us home. Um, when you listen to this pod, it will take you over. And there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I mean the the original Invasion of the Body Snatchers is I think a classic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but it's my opinion that this one is uh, better. Yes. Uh, I think because of it's like it has like a more the the original takes place in a small town where everybody knows each other, and so it's kind of weird when you know Bob starts acting funny. Right. This takes place in a metropolis, so mm-hmm. it, there's that anonymity. That adds to it. You can't tell if all these people around you are just, you know, they have apathy for the people around them. There's like a lecture about, look at the stuff that we eat about, you know, we feed right. ourselves junk. To, you know, it's like, so we can't tell if they're How would we know if pod people is, yeah, yeah. or not. I guess it is kind of going the, like what I said with the, the, the body snatchers, mm-hmm. one on the military base. Uh, they just take that a little further. Um, obviously, you know, it's like uh, when people write, um, horror stories. It's like, so what, what are the things that bother humans, right? Mm-hmm. What, what creeps them out? And this idea of losing your identity, losing your individuality, um, losing what it means to be human, we say, but like, what does it mean to be human? It seems like the movie's saying it's the capacity for love uh, or empathy mm. or, you know, emotion, basically, but uh, you know, is the thing that separates us from like the other creatures in the the galaxy. And these mm-hmm. things, when they take you over, you lose that. And so this is like something that is uh, treasured, that is lost. You know, as you see from Donald Sutherland and all that. But then it's like a revolution takes place, and like, well, the new uh, the new uh, keepers, stewards of the earth, yeah. uh, come and take over. It's um, they'll discover depression. I guarantee it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> um. The uh, the special effects like stand out like I mean they still you know I, I, I think wanted, it still I wanted more up. yeah they're so yeah. good I wanted more of them through later in the movie yeah I mean all those pods birthing things yeah. the yeah, I mean that that thing at the beginning with the little tendrils on the I'm still going like mm-hmm. it, it just it looks so cool and I'm like how did they do it. I mean, obviously it's reverse and somebody's pulling something through a hole or whatever, but it's on a leaf and you can see behind nope. it and, you know, they didn't, it's not blue it's, screen. It's nope, like, it's very good. They, I'm hung up on that. I like the, the dog <laughs> faced, uh, or the, the, sorry, the human faced dog and all that other stuff. But, uh, it, it really is like, uh, it's a more, I guess that's what you look for. Like in a remake, it's like, it takes the central idea of the story and, uh, like finds the, it feels like the best version of it like this is the definitive invasion of the body snatchers i mean you should check the other ones out but you're going to yeah. be disappointed by the mm-hmm. invasion i will tell you that right. uh <laughs> but yeah i would definitely recommend this movie it is a stone cold classic and if you haven't seen it you deserve to check it out and i think mm-hmm. that is echoed by the saturday night free show so. watch it yep. all right uh, well, thanks for sticking with us this long. Now uh, we're back to our regularly scheduled program. Back to us. <laughs> and Colin, you are the first pick, uh, uh, appropriate enough, for the new year. What are we watching next week for our first pick of 2024? Well, if the 1970s Don't were like, uh, you know, social and political paranoia, mm. the 1960s, uh-huh. right, was the decade where Time Magazine proclaimed is God dead? <laughs> so Satanism was like a big uh, threat. Right. Uh, and we so we're going over to England. And because Michaela keeps talking about this, and I'm like, I want to see this again. Uh, we're watching City of the Dead, which Yay! you may <laughs> you may know it under its title, Horror Hotel. So 
I have no I idea. Wait. Oh, <laughs> All right, my good. God, I can't wait. Oh, my God, I can't wait. With Christopher Lee, oh, of course. Yes. Of course, of course. Yeah, Horror, Horror oh, Hotel. Man. This is, I watch this every Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, this is annual. <laughs> Ever since, oh, well, you guys have seen parts of it because there was a Should night when. Should we save this? Yeah. Okay. Because okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to think yeah. that. I'm like, how do we watch okay. okay. clips of it on Elvira? Yeah. That's what it was mm-hmm. on yeah. Shudder. Okay. So, City of the Dead, a.k.a. Horror Hotel, next week on Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.